Right now, we're setting up survey line for the first line of, of mines. We do four lines of 25 because we're lucky enough to have more than 100 inert mines. These two just came from Ukraine. It's not easy to find places where you can lay dormant mines and fly drones. We are trying to automate detection of different types of landmines, anti-personnel mines, anti-tank mines, and we're doing this through remote sensing and drones. Currently, most of humanitarian demining is manual, so this is a beep and prod method where we have metal detectors, layout grids, and you're able to scan a metal detector really low down to the ground and poke it to see if there is a mine there. It can be quite dangerous, and we want to really increase the efficiency of this task. It can take a very long time to clear a field that has absolutely no mines in it. So we want to be able to find a field that actually does have mines and make that a high priority of clearance. Drones are relatively safe. We don't have to step in the field to assess it. So we're flying over, taking surveys of mine fields, and then we're using machine learning to help us automate the detection afterwards. OK, but hold on, hold on, one sec. Yeah. Often people conflate the terms machine learning and artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence includes every application where a machine is designed to imitate human perception. Uh, machine learning is more specific. It is when a machine learns just from the data that you give it the features of the object that you wish to detect. So humans are not very good at deciding what makes a chair a chair or what makes a landmine a landmine. Machines are. So the neural network detects landmines just from the data that you give it. So we give it varied data and lots and lots of labeled data. That's why we're out here to collect lots of real world data. Machine learning always works best with real world data. We have an algorithm that's able to detect the PFM1 plastic landmine that's actually now being used and deployed in Ukraine. Where we want to go with this project is be able to detect many types of cluster munitions and landmines. So the total goal would be to fly over with different sensors, either a thermal sensor, multispectral, or visual, input the imagery into the algorithm, and it'll output the coordinates of where different mines lay, and it'll also say what type of mine they are. It sort of blends in, but so this is uh, PFM1. These go off from cumulative pressure, and they go off from approximately 15 kilograms of cumulative pressure. So it's designed that way for a pretty nasty purpose. They don't blow up immediately when they're dropped or when animals walk on them. They're designed to explode upon handling. They're mostly children, they're mostly civilians, and they're designed to maim. Fire in the hole! We did two blasts yesterday. You can see the holes are a little bit different, and the reason why we want to look at these holes is to try to understand, well, we can detect landmines, but can we also see presence of mines so we can see things like crater holes and it's a lot of indirect evidence we can use. This is basically the field as it will, as it will look. Um, we label all the mines that we lay out as well as the ground control points. These ground control points are used for creating a centimeter scale accurate ortho mosaic. That's just a big picture of all the pictures that we're gonna take with the drones stitched together. Convolutional neural networks are scarily accurate. In a lot of applications, they're better than humans. We've achieved a 92% accuracy. With the limited amount of data we've gotten, in this field season, we're collecting a lot more data. And with machine learning, it's always better to get the data that you want initially and not have to create the data that you want with post-processing afterwards. We're using visual sensors, so a lot of mines are on the surface, they're scatterable, but oftentimes mines are obscured by tall grasses. They can be obscured by some kind of sand. So that's really where thermal and multispectral imaging comes into play and can help us detect mines that humans can't see. We'll label the imagery, we'll draw boxes around all the mines and label them with the, their classification. After that, we're going to split them again to, into manageable sizes for the convolutional neural network and feed them in as training data. We're going to train the network and then test it and evaluate it. It's windy. It's very windy. It's gonna be fine for most of the drones. This one is a little bit older, needs special care. Yeah, in Oklahoma, you kind of never know. It's never been this windy, but it's also never been this cool. So it's usually like 99. So there's pros and cons. 
This is just um, a DJI Phantom 4, so these are off the shelf. We try not to retrofit as much as possible. We want to make this method really easy and user-friendly. We don't want it to be some specialized drone that costs a lot of money and only we produce. We want this to be like universally easy to find and use. You can see the mines like if you look close. They take some time to thermally equilibrate with the environment. With the thermal, we try to wait about an hour, and we did today. Something that I wish people knew more about is actually landmines as a problem globally. 7,000 people have been injured or died this last year. Some estimates of active landmines, it's anywhere from 110 million to a little bit less than that. It's hard to quantify, but in the millions of numbers. They're found in over 60 different countries and regions throughout the world, so they're very widespread and mostly in post-conflict nations. Mines can last decades after a war is over. In the Soviet-Afghan war, which took place in 1979 and onward, there are still mines today that people are stepping on and being killed from. The plan with our project is to have a self-contained offline method to help deminers. It is to help certain teams detect the mines that they're looking for more efficiently, more effectively, and safer. Me and Gabriel have co-founded the Mining Research Community. It's a nonprofit organization that focuses on landmine detection technologies and development. We want to bridge academic research with humanitarian demining, and we're trying to apply qualitative scientific method for detecting landmines and in communication with mine action organizations to see what they actually need in the field. The end goal is to give a nonprofit demining organization a big pelican case with a computer that's designed just to process this data and drones and sensors that are designed just to take pictures of mines. The next step is for us to test this on real mine fields in Cambodia and we're hopefully going to go out there and be able to fly and test our method in quite challenging situations to detect mines in the real world. If it scales well there, then I think we'll be ready. This is GCP-1, yeah. so draw a white square here and write white. <laughs> <laughs> I think the main thing that I've learned from coming out into the field for these two weeks is just how hard I can work and just how comfortable I can be with being uncomfortable. And the only thing that enables me to do that is that I believe that we can save lives and I believe that if I save lives, I can die happy. Is that too dramatic? No, not at all.